Thank you very much, Matthijs. Um, it's a pleasure to, I was going to say it's a pleasure to be here, but I'm just sitting in my living room. It's a pleasure to be to participating in this workshop. I want to start by thanking the organizing committee, Brian and Matthijs and Wilson and Stefan and Joel, but I'm sure I'm missing a few names as well. who have done a really spectacular job putting this together. I think back when this whole uh, CEI consortium started, I don't think any of us really thought that we'd get anything like to the point we are now and the participation we're having here. So um, I was asked by the organizers, well, the three of us were asked by the organizers to play the role of founding fathers. And somehow, I don't know if it's just a function of age, I seem to bubble to the top as the, the founding father to give the introduction. Maybe the idea was if you have the oldest person go first, we'll find all the glitches Matthijs was talking about early that way, I don't know. So um, I'm just gonna go through a sh very brief history of how, of how CEI got started. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what CEI consists of, the activities CEI is engaged in, and then turn the floor over to the speakers that we're all interested in hearing from. So this whole idea started, Rob McLeod was asked back in 2014, 13 probably by the time when it started, to organize or help co-organize a workshop in Columbus, Ohio. And he invited uh, a few people who he knew just couldn't bear the idea of missing out on being in Columbus, Ohio, some of whom are pictured here. And, and sort of informal part of the, the proceedings, I, Matthijs tells me he thinks was on a school bus like the one pictured in the lower right, which is how we got back and forth from where the talks were to where we were staying. The idea came up initially among some of the younger people pictured here of having a uh, hackathon of some sort related to, to electrocardiographic imaging. And the idea really was to try and jumpstart more active collaboration across the groups that were working on this, I, on this problem with the idea of having more, that, that science would progress faster if people actually talked to each other and shared ideas and shared data and common platforms to compare both techniques, algorithms, and data on. So um, computing cardiology that next September happened to be in Cambridge. And so uh, two students of mine at the, at the time, pictured here, Borak Aram and John McCoy Font, and I organized a workshop in our lab building, pictured on the right. And we had sort of an informal planning meeting. We had a, meetings over a couple of days. A number of the people who were here were present. And there was a lot of enthusiasm for this idea. And coming out of that, Olaf Dussel very generously offered to organize a meeting at a much more attractive location than our lab in, in Boston, in the Black Forest in Bad Herrenalp. And we had a two day workshop there with uh, quite a few speakers. And it was a combination of technical exchange and practical discussions about how to put this together as an ongoing, sustainable, productive consortium. And I think actually that combination is kind of a hallmark of CEI in a way that all of our meetings have tended to be a combination of uh, exchange of ideas, technical exchange, and uh, uh, discussion about practical ways to figure out how to work together. So um, since then, we've had more or less annual satellite meetings mostly in conjunction with computing and cardiology. And then last year, because computing and cardiology was in Asia, we weren't sure what the participation would be. We organized instead at uh, the Functional Imaging and Modeling of the Heart Conference in Bordeaux in last June, June 2019. And that's the sort of organizational or meeting structure that brings us today. So today is the, will be the most recent in the succession of more or less annual meetings. And we've kind of bounced back and forth between more, uh, working meetings and more technical exchange meetings. And today obviously is a technical exchange meeting. And in particular, the idea the organizing committee had is, is evident in the program was to really see if we can jumpstart conversations among industry, clinicians, and academics. So that's sort of the meeting history, but CEI has become much more than a, a bunch of meetings. We have, of course, a web page because if we didn't have a web page, we wouldn't exist. And that's where the banner for my slides came from the top of the web page. We have the really heart of CEI's uh, activity right now, which are these uh, coll collaborative work groups. So there are six active work groups right now, I believe. You will hear brief presentations from a representative of each work group at the end of the program. And 
really the idea of those presentations is not only to let you know what CEI is doing, but hopefully to entice you if you're not already involved with one or more work groups to get involved. But these work groups really cover quite a range of, of uh, technical activities related to ECG imaging. So there's the work groups on signal processing, on forward model building, one specifically dedicated to atrial arrhythmias and ECGI, one dedicated to the, the technical problem of finding activation and recovery times, particularly in inverse reconstructed electrograms, one on PVC localization as a kind of benchmark problem for ECGI, and then there's a work group that's trying to take all the different pieces of software that every, or at least the, the most useful pieces of software that everybody uh, produces on their own and trying to put them together in some format that they, people can actually uh, interact not only by using the same data but by using the same software with alternative solutions. Another major um, activity of CEI and I think major contribution that we've made is that we put together a database of exemplary data sets. So these data sets tend to consist of both signals and geometries. There are now, I counted last night, I counted at least 20 data sets from at least eight labs all over the world. It's hosted at University of Utah, but really there are contributions from many of the people who are here, and we're always looking for more contributions as well. And these data sets have simulated signals, they have animal studies, they have clinical studies, they have studies dedicated to a particular problem like PVCs, um, they have studies that are more general, and they have, the animal studies, again, are also quite varied. Uh, as are the simulated data sets. So um, this is really available to anyone who wants to use it. There are no restrictions on its use, except that we ask that you credit both Edgar and the contributors of the data set if you publish anything based on the data set. Uh, and um, I encourage everybody to use it, and I encourage you to contact us if you think you have data that's not represent our data set, it'll be of useful to the community, use to the community. Um, we have you know, the usual kinds of technical infrastructure for managing um, our projects. So we use Google Drive, there's a shared drive facility now in Google Drive. We used to share data to, um, we're starting to put software up on there using some Google facilities for doing computation to, to work on papers together. Um, we also use GitHub and all the usual tools. And we have a Google group, several, a number of Google groups in communication. The main group has a, I put this one up because there's 131 members, which I thought was, I was impressed by when I looked at uh, when I put these slides together, but there are also specific Google groups for many of the working groups. So that's the main working infrastructure in addition to the meetings. Um, and there's also, I don't think I mentioned, there's also an exec group um, that uh, is pretty open. If again, if someone's interested in being active and wants to be part of that, we meet on a more or less monthly basis, trying to keep on top of all the activities, trying